Hello, uh, Jim Howard here in uh, Fort Worth, Texas. I'm looking down to see what the date is, and it's uh, April 5th, 2012. And it's uh, 12 noon. A beautiful day outside. It's uh, 69 degrees here in Fort Worth, and the uh, sun is shining. I did a couple, I think the last two or it was the last three videos were about the storm that hit Dallas got hit pretty pretty hard uh, I was I've never uh, this is not bravery on my part stupidity I've never been afraid of tornadoes or storms I wasn't afraid of the hurricanes in uh, Florida but uh, I think now I mean, in the past, I, I just never paid any attention, you know, attention to them. But the, the rash of storms have been recently so bad across the United States, and the tornadoes and the damage they've done, and the stories that I've seen of people, you know, things that have happened to people. I, I, um, I think I'll be, if they say take shelter, I'll be heading to the my little bathroom here and get in the bathtub and throw a mattress on top of my head. Wanted to comment about a bunch of different uh, things and make, make it very brief. Uh, I'm looking at my blog here. I uh, commented on uh, Joe Scarborough and Morning Joe on my blog. I uh, blogged the other day about uh, when uh, former Vice President Dick Cheney got his heart transplant that I was surprised that someone 71 years of age would be getting a heart transplant and uh, I'm 71 by the way and I, I, I wondered if uh, I blogged about it, I wondered if, if he got any special consideration uh, you know because of who he was and I uh, blogged again about that uh, about uh, did the U.S. taxpayers pay for Dick Cheney's new heart? Um, so he's on Medicare, and, a, and apparently Medicare does pay for uh, heart transplants. And then he also apparently has federal, uh, you know, when he started out in life, uh, when he went to work, it was. Uh, in politics and right away he got uh, you know elected to he or he got got into politics and then he uh, eventually worked for the Nixon and Ford administrations and then he was White House Chief of Staff and then he was in the US House of Representatives for five terms and then he was uh, Secretary of Defense and, uh, and then when he was done doing that then he went to work for Halliburton as their CEO. So really all, I mean, the citizens paid for the, I mean, because, I mean, he's a career politician with federal, he would have federal insurance and then he was in charge of Operation Desert Storm and Halliburton, a uh, defense contractor, made millions upon millions upon millions because of him and because of that operation and the others and then he goes to work for him as their uh, CEO when he so I mean you know but I, I hope he does well I also wonder well I wondered if he got any special consideration and uh, apparently 71 year olds do get heart transplants uh, I read some of the uh, information about it and they they say that uh, he didn't get any special consideration on the list and they say that is really monitored really well to make sure that nobody gets special consideration but in a way he did well not special consideration but I was reading about it. I didn't realize it worked this way you can be on more than one list if you can afford to have the testing done for each each list so you know I mean a lot of people I couldn't probably afford to I well, if I needed a heart transplant, I, I wouldn't get one uh, I, at my age. But um, 
I mean, if I was going to, I would have to pay four or five hundred dollars, I guess, to have the testing done to get on the list. And then I would have to have the transportation and ability to get to within an X amount of time to the location where the heart was. Um, I mean, maybe I could come up with five hundred dollars to get on one list. But you're allowed to be on more than one list. So, I mean, he's got millions upon millions of dollars so he could get on all the list and you know he's got the money so that being able to get you know if, if I got on a list I'm in Texas if I got on a list in uh, Virginia uh, there there's a requi requirement you have to be able to be there in a certain amount of time when they notify your hearts available that you have to have the capabilities to get you know I would you know, I probably wouldn't be able to do that where he could get on a whole bunch of lists all over the place and if it came down to, you know, he could afford a private jet to get him there. So, I don't know. I I hope he does well. He I saw where he got out of the hospital. Let me go over to my... Uh, I see that uh, on the Trayvon Martin... George Zimmerman a situation that uh, I've seen some news media people who are now uh, not apologizing but they're, they're modifying now they're saying you know before they were saying you know I, I demand the immediate we demand the immediate we want the immediate arrest of you know George Zimmerman now I see him saying well we need to wait for the you know the investigation. So I think they realized that a lot of them jumped, uh, at least for the news media. I can understand the the, the general public, you know, but uh, the news media should not be. And and I, I blogged about that. And I blogged about remember uh, Richard Jewell, the security guard back in uh, for the 1996 Summer Olympics, and he was a security guard there, and he found a bomb. And he notified the you know the, uh, the the law enforcement there, and then he and the other security guards started evacuated the people out of that area, and then that package, whatever sack or whatever it was, you know, exploded. So he and he he did fantastic. Well, the news media for a day or two, I guess they said you know a hero, what a hero he was. And then they started saying, well, he's probably the person that did. I mean, and some of them just came flat out. They said terrible. I've, I've got, you could go to my blog and read it. They said terrible things about him. And uh, turned out, of course, that, uh, uh, what's his name, did it? Uh, Eric Rudolph, was it? Yeah. Eric Robert Rudolph was the, the person who planted the bomb. And, of course, uh, Richard A. Jewell did a fantastic job, and if you want to say a hero, I mean, he was just doing his job, but, you know, uh, so he sued and collected from a, a bunch of different media people, and I commented about that I thought that George Zimmerman, I didn't think, I don't think that George Zimmerman is going to be arrested. That's another thing about that situation. When I first heard about it, when we all first heard about it, it was, you know, the police let him go. But now we know, you know, they put handcuffs on him and they took him to the police station and they put him in an interrogation room and they got his statement and then they let him go. When the thing first happened, I thought they went out and at the scene and, you know, checked everything out and then said, okay, we'll go on because, you know, so. So uh, what I think, I don't think that George Zimmerman, I think that stand, stand your ground law is going to protect him. I don't think he's going to be arrested. I don't think he's going to be charged. And uh, what I blogged about was that I think that he may have a lawsuit against a whole bunch of uh, news media people. And I, you know, I blogged that boy, people would be really pissed and really enraged if, you know, he's not arrested, he's not charged. And oh, also on that I, that I, I talk, talked about is that that stand by your law, stand by your law, that the uh, stand your ground law, not only 
says that uh, police and the prosecutors cannot arrest you and charge you if you were standing your ground, you know, under the conditions. Also, that people cannot sue you civilly, and I didn't know that in the beginning, and that you can't be sued. The law also protects you and says you can't be sued. So, that's how upset a lot of people are going to be. And then, if George Zimmerman were to sue the news media and collect some money, people would be really enraged. I I said that it blogged that you know that if he did do that, what he should do is make it very clear when, that when he sues that say half of the money that he collects will go into uh, the Trayvon, go into a Trayvon Martin uh, foundation to do various things that he has no control over that money or access something like that in order so that people won't be so enraged and also order also to you know help out uh, let's see looking at my blog again. I'm not sure if they're doing it today, but when uh, President Obama made his, I'm so up to 11 minutes, aren't we? Uh, so I'm going to skip that. Anyway, I just wanted, what else did I, oh, I got a green screen the other day. If you watched the, I think it was the second storm video, I was in here with the video camera making it, and I saw the, it was tornado warning, you know, take cover, and I saw, had the, the shades up so I'd get some more light for the video, and I saw the lady from UPS, and she was on the camera, so I set the camera down, I went over and got the stuff, I came back, and then the camera was still sitting there out the window, and you could see her going back, so, anyway, I got a green screen, I couldn't, didn't have any way to really hang it, so today my, my son's going to go to Walmart for me, uh, and I'm planning on putting it on the wall behind me. He's going to get a curtain rod, a long curtain rod like you use over a patio door or something. And I'm going to hang the green screen behind me, and then I'll see what I can, uh, what I can do with the green screen. Not sure how it'll work out, but well, okay, this is long enough. So thanks for watching. I just wanted to uh, update you. Uh, storm, no storm damage around around here. Uh, and uh, thank a lot of you, uh, not a lot, but some of you uh, wished me well and hoped everything was okay. And everything worked out fine for us. Uh, oh, I, that's what I was going to start to say in the very beginning. Uh, I've been a storm watcher. I, I started out when I was in high school, back in the 50s, late 50s. I was in civil defense and the ground observer corps watching for enemy aircraft and then they ground up the air force did away at the ground observer corps and we became tra trained weather observers so i was out with so we were out watching for uh, severe weather uh the years that i worked for, you know the 30 years i worked for hospital security that was one of the things that we we did we had to also be watching for uh, storms and making sure the hospital went into code gray or whatever their code was. We also would uh, take the video around on storm things to the nursing units and, and run the video on what to do for storms. And uh, I'm an amateur radio operator and in the past I've uh, participated in Skywarn where we watch for severe weather. Uh, and I've never seen a tornado. I mean, it, you know, not in real life. I've seen them on television, but I've never seen one in real life. And uh, I have no desire to see one, and I didn't see one the other day, except on the television set. So uh, thanks very much for watching this video.